Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. And on this video, we are going to talk about the radiation therapy treatment and their nursing management. But before we're going to discuss this, please don't forget to click like, comment, and share this video to your friends. Oops, might as well click that notification bell so that you're going to be updated on the upload that I'm going to take. First, let's discuss radiation therapy. And this is a type of cancer treatment that uses beams of intense energy to kill cancer cells. The radiation therapy treatment most often use x-rays, but protons and other types of energy can also be used. Therefore, we can say that the radiation treatment is hazard to the patient because it uses also ionizing radiation to interrupt cell growth. The action of the radiation damages cells by destroying the genetic material that controls how cell grows and divide. Unfortunately, the radiation not only kills or slows the growth of cancer cells, but it can also affect the nearby healthy cells. And that depends on the type of radiation therapy treatment treatment that will be used. They also damage the healthy cells which can cause some side effects. So technically, this radiation therapy is not a drug but it is a treatment. It is typically given outside the body with big huge of x-ray machine and sometimes consideration with other chemo drugs. And we are going to discuss the types of radiation therapy on the next slides. To further discuss the radiation therapy, let's proceed to their purposes. First, aside from chemotherapy, it is one of the primary treatments in cancer. And before the surgery, a neoadjuvant is being done, or the neoadjuvant therapy. The neoadjuvant therapy is the administration of therapeutic agents before the main treatment or the surgery. The aim of the neoadjuvant therapy is to reduce the size or extent of the cancer before using radical treatment intervention, thus making procedures easier and more likely to succeed and reducing the consequences of a more extensive treatment technique. So the aim of the neoadjuvant therapy is to reduce the size or extent of the tumor before the surgery. And after the surgery, an adjuvant therapy is done. The aim of the adjuvant therapy lessens the chance of the cancer cells to come back because even though a surgery is successful, not all cancer cells or tumors were removed. There are still microscopic bits of cancers sometimes remain and are undetectable in the current methods or they might not be seen in some imaging. To briefly discuss the difference, neoadjuvant therapy, they are being used before the main treatment or surgery. Meanwhile, adjuvant therapy, this is being used after the surgery in order to clean up some cancer cells or microscopic bits of cancerous tumor. Another purpose of the radiation therapy is that it can be used to combine with the other treatment like chemotherapy. If the chemotherapy and radiation therapy will be fused together or will be com combined together, they can effectively destroy some cancer cells. And the last purpose in the list is that the radiation therapy purpose in the advanced stage is to alleviate symptoms caused by the cancer. Though radiation therapy treats many types of cancers effectively, we still need to note the factors to consider in radiation therapy. First is we need to note the type of cancer. The next one is the tumor size. Also, the tumor location. The next one is that we need to note how close the tumor is to the normal tissues that are sensitive to radiation. So we need to know the distance of tumor to the normal tissues. And also we need to get the medical history history of the patient. To further discuss radiation therapy, we need to understand the types of radiotherapy. And we have two. Number one is the external beam radiotherapy or the EBRT. And the other one is the internal radiation or we call it the brachytherapy. The external beam radiotherapy, that is also known as teletherapy. And it is being done outside the body. Meanwhile, the internal radiation, it is done inside the body. In internal radiation, there are beams that is introduced in the body and it is implanted. These are sealed and unsealed implants. 
Let's first discuss the external beam radiotherapy. If we say external beam radiotherapy, please note that this kind of radiotherapy is not that delicate to the patient because it is a treatment outside the body and x-rays are used to destroy cancer cells at the skin surface or deeper in the body. Meaning to say, the radiation is outside, it is not introduced inside the body. The external beam radiation therapy is usually conducted using a linear accelerator. It is a machine that directs high energy beam of radiation into the body. So this is the kind of machine. So as the patient lie on the table, the linear accelerator moves around to the patient in order to deliver radiation from several angles. This machine can be adjusted for a particular situation so that it can deliver the precise dose of radiation according to the doctor's order. Order. The radiation therapy, especially in the external beam, positioning the patient is vital. There will be a simulation to be done, and the radiation team will work together in order for the patient to lie on a comfortable position during treatment. It is imperative that the patient will lie still during the treatment. So, cautions and restraints are also used to position the patient in the right way and to help the patient to hold still during the treatment. So, this is an example of an external beam radiation therapy. And take note that the higher the energy, the deeper the penetration into the patient's body. Take note that here in the external beam radiotherapy, the patient is not radioactive because the radiation is being done outside the body, okay? To shift gear, let's discuss the nursing intervention with regard to the external beam radiotherapy or the EBRT. And in here, please do not forget that do not be harsh on the patient's skin. Remember that the radiation therapy is already harsh on the skin because it makes the skin dry and itchy and it's very sensitive to the skin. And because of the effect of the radiation to the patient's skin, please watch out for the effects of teletherapy like radiodermatitis or skin changes and fatigue. So this is the kind of dermatitis to the patient's neck. The radiation really has significant negative impact in the patient's skin. Meanwhile, in the other picture, this is radiodermatitis. There are skin changes already. And since the patient is exposed to radiation, expect that the patient will suffer from fatigue. Because of this Skin problems, avoid using ointments, lotions, or powders on the area. Also, avoid using makeups or cosmetics and do not use also shavers. The second one is that do not remove the markings on the area. Oh, by the way, before they are going to do the radiation, the radiation team are actually doing site marking in the patient's skin in order for them to know what part of the body will be radiated. So, since they are gonna do marking, do not ever attempt to remove the markings because you are just introducing pain and skin irritation to the patient. And the last one is that provide gentle oral care. So it is better to use your hand in cleaning the skin rather than a washcloth to clean the radiation area. To switch gears, let's discuss the internal radiation and as we mentioned earlier, they are being implanted inside the body. The internal radiation is also called the brachytherapy and these internal radiation therapies are actually delivering a high dose of radiation in the localized area or in the affected area. So the client here is radioactive during and after the procedure making it more a delicate treatment. So since the seeds are introduced inside the body, the patient is radioactively hazard. The radioactive implants, by the way, are put inside or near the tumor. So for example, this is the tumor. The radiation therapy team will going to introduce it inside the patient's body near to the tumor for 24 to 72 hours. That is why the patient is radioactively hazard. So for example, this is the tumor and the radioactive material is put into the body. The tissues surrounding the radioactive material receive the most radiation and as you get further away from this bed the radiation becomes lesser and lesser this brachytherapy is commonly used in endometrial cancer and cervical cancer 
In the internal radiation therapy or the brachytherapy, we have actually types as mentioned earlier. These are the sealed and unsealed. Their differences is that sealed is a solid object that is placed in the body cavity so that the radiation source stays in place. The modes in introducing the sealed implantation can be through needle, seeds, or beads, catheter, or in the intra cavity. In the sealed implantation, note that the body fluids are not radioactive. Switching the gear to the unsealed, this is a radioactive substance that is injected in liquid form into the vein. So, the radiation source is absorbed in the system. And the mode in giving unsealed is via intravenous or oral, like the iodine-131 for the thyroid cancer. And note that here in the unsealed, the body fluids are radioactive. This image shows the sealed implantation, wherein the radiation source stays in place via the implanted needle. Meanwhile, the unsealed sourced implantation is the iodine-131, which is swallowed to treat the thyroid cancer. To further discuss, let's proceed to the nursing interventions for the internal radiation. So how are we going to manage our patient in the internal radiation? It is through the application of STD. S stands for shielding, T stands for time, and D stands for distance. In the S or in the shielding, the radiation team needs to wear a lead gown and dosimeter budge, wherein the dosimeter budge is actually being used to measure the radiation exposure of the staff. Please put in mind that when you have a patient undergoing a radiation treatment, you are also at risk and you also need to consider yourself and your safety. The next one is the time. In caring patients undergoing radiation treatment, the staff maximum minutes per shift is only 30. Since radiation is really bad, and it is toxic to the patient and even to the people near to the patient. As a caregiver, you need to prioritize the safety of your patient and the healthcare practitioners. So, you need to limit the time, distance, and shield. So, since there is only 30 minutes per shift, the staff needs to rotate in caring for this patient. Okay. Meanwhile, here in the D, that means distance and the healthcare provider and other people needs to maintain six feet away from the client. So, teach all visitors to be away six feet at least, no pregnant company even. So, since we are maintaining the distance of the patient to the other people, let's assign a private room to the patient with comfort room. Never ever assign a pregnant hospital staff to the client because it is not safe, especially to the baby. And never let a child to visit the client. The intracavitary brachytherapy is usually being used in the reproductive cancers. They are most commonly used in endometrial cancer and cervical cancer. So, the nurse needs to promote bladder and bowel emptying before the procedure. Complete bed rest is necessary. Low residual or low fiber diet in order to slow down the bowel movement and prevent defecation as well as you can insert indwelling urinary catheter as doctors ordered. Therefore, teach the patient not to get up if they have implants inside their cervical area since the implant can fall out easily. On the other hand, here in the unsealed brachytherapy, teach your patient to flush the toilet bowl three times after voiding and defecating. As I've mentioned earlier, that your patient is delicate, okay? So all of their body wastes are also having a high dose of radiation. And visitors must not share toilet with the client. So for example, if the implant is dislodged or fall out, tell your patient not to touch the implant. Use a long object instead to pick up the implant and put it in the hazard bin. Take note that in radiation, it is really bad and it is toxic to the patient and anyone in close contact to the patient. Always prioritize your safety as a nurse and your patient's safety. You need to limit the time, use proper shielding, and apply appropriate distance. Do not forget that the higher the dose of the radiotherapy, the more delicate to the patient's side, okay? So I guess that's all for this video. I hope you guys gained knowledge in the radiation therapy treatment and their nursing management. There are still other topics that I'm going to share here in this 
topic in oncology nursing so keep on subscribing and might as well click that notification bell so you're going to be updated on the reviews that i'm going to share don't forget to check the other videos that i have on this channel maybe they can help you if you guys need some help again in nursing topics or if you have some difficulties in nursing you can comment your problem down below and maybe i can help you so thank you so much guys for watching don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends see you on my next video bye mm -hmm.